Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Traders Lounge. How you doing? All right. So once again, got the market putting on a little bit of a happy dance today. Uh, after uh, I guess it liked the reports enough to at least try to make another run up. It seems to be stalling out around fifty twenty five area at the moment. Uh, we'll see if it can get through there even by the end of the day, but not sure where we're going. Of course, we've been up to forty eight. Died off there, probably easily could be we're trying to go to 58.50 and beyond. But uh, we do have a, a, like a Fed speaker, I think it's talking right now. Then there's one tonight and then there's another one tomorrow as well. as so there's some economic reports tomorrow that come out an hour before the market opens. Let me, uh, let me show those real quick just so we're thinking about it doesn't mean you can't trade of course but just things to think about but if you look here i'll go ahead and share here share screen boom if you look here you uh you can see tomorrow is really loaded isn't it jobless oh, that's not tomorrow that's today buddy let's go come on mark you can do it there we go all right so tomorrow we got housing search building permits the ppi and uh, that, that that's an inflation number on the producer end, of course. Uh, that can have some effect, uh, kind of like what's in the pipeline with inflation. And then we have the vice chair speaking at, that would be, these are all Eastern, so that'd be 8, 10 a.m. That would be before the market even opened. So before the market opens, we'll have him talking and all these reports here. And then we'll also get consumer sentiment and another Fed speaker at 11, 10 Central. 1210 Eastern tomorrow. And but if you look at next week, big thing is probably just the Fed meeting minutes. That's probably one of the bigger ones. Um, whoops, I went too far on uh Wednesday. Yeah. But uh, all right, so that's just a little bit about what's in the pipeline news wise. Just something to keep yourself aware of. And uh just like I said today <clears throat> at the opening bell. The trades that I thought were in focus, to me, are still in focus. So let's take a look at those. And uh, we'll probably have to manipulate some things around here. But, um, you know, it's hard to to not want to be a little bit long vague in this circumstance, even though volatility has been up a little. And we can see it's firming up here. I'm not sure if we're going to go down a whole lot more in the vol. Uh, the pretty firm here from everybody protecting uh, their positions, I believe, since we're there, near these all-time highs, people have FOMO, fear of missing out. So there, there's a lot more protecting the positions. Um, so one idea I had was for a calendar for next Friday, four days wide. Oh, and by the way, you could put this trade on uh, for the following Friday to March 1st. That's about as far out as I ever go with calendars is that. Um but I did it at the 50-10 here because the call demand and volume is so high that you're getting a lot flatter upside with call calendars than you are with put calendars. You can just take a look here. Uh, put calendars just creep in, don't look quite as good. I would probably more use put calendars when I got a little more bearish. Uh, but if you just use call calendars, and I was in some of these last week, you can still add things down here and be just fine. And that's how I look at this. If it wants to run up and make all new all-time highs, I can just add another calendar. And by the way, volatility probably would have went down a hair. Certainly, I wouldn't think it would go up much, right? So it would be even better. And on the downside, plenty of time. We wouldn't really have to add anything until maybe 4970 and then go down and add another flyer calendar. Um, but I think in the meantime, just staying right in this area, trying to get an 8 to 10% profit, is really the way to go. Uh, and as we get here later in the day, I think you can do something like this. Uh, for the, those of you who may be new or new to me in here, uh, I don't like to put on new calendars, flies, diagonals, whatever, on Fridays, uh, unless it's an adjustment, because so many times on Fridays, the market makers can manipulate that volatility around. And then what happens is, they suck some volatility out and then they put it back in Monday morning. So what happens is you pay for, say, a calendar 
on Friday afternoon. And if the market doesn't move a lot, when you get to Monday morning, you could have put the same thing on uh, for the same or cheaper, usually many times right around it. And what happens if you have a big move? Well, you wouldn't have wanted to be in it. So you really took the weekend risk for free. So the last day I do new trades of this sort is today. And that's because of that. Uh, and then another one, uh, this all put flat fly. I'll have to change that around. Now, normally these, you could put at or just below the money. I definitely want to put it below the money here since we're up here so far. And I think you have a bigger risk of things going down probably than up, not to say they're going to, but the risk I'd say was higher. And uh, 70 down, 60 up. Let's take a look. So if you do that, it's got to prove itself, get past and make new all-time highs before you even have to adjust. And if it goes down, guess what? You're profitable. How about that? And if you wanted to be even more profitable if it went down, you could do 65 up. Now, that would make you even more money when we ran down. However, you'd be down a little further up here. But I think that's a viable trade. I really do. Um, and if you want it, it's a little lower percentage play, obviously. Uh, but you could come in a little closer with it. Uh, you know, March 8th or what have you, if you want to do something asymmetrical like that. Another idea, if you're bearish here, is you could do a balanced fly. Let's see if we can get away with 60-60. It might need to be a little wider. Let's check it out. So 60 up, 60 down, you, and you center it around where we're trading. Now, the idea of this trade is right there, you get these short deltas. So that first dollar that it goes down, you're going to make a couple of bucks. And as long as it's going down, that's good for you. In fact, you could probably just take it off at a profit here and wouldn't even have to adjust it. On the upside, of course, you could always adjust it if we get to all new highs. So this is a little bit, I wouldn't quite call it a directional play, the, the balance fly. Uh, but you're getting in that realm, right? Is it leans a little bit. Nothing wrong with leaning them. Uh, and let's look at, at uh, something else here. Um, oh, I wanted to see what it looked like. 70 up, 70 down. Now, it's going to be a little more money because when you get wider, you got more room and you have to pay for that, right? You'll be down a little more up here. But I, I wouldn't be afraid to wait till 65 to adjust. Maybe even 70. And the more you're in this trade, uh, the more time decay you'll get and you won't be down as far. And then on the downside in the 70, 70, you're up money. So 60, 60, 70, 70, you pick them. And you, you could also do things like, um, I'll tell you what, let's do this. You could also do, just start it a little bit above the money there. So it'd be 60 up there. 60 down would be 49.70. And if you did that, you're still up on the downside. And you've got just a hair more upside. That's a pretty pretty nice looking trade in my mind. I, I don't have a problem with that at all. And if, the thing is, if you try to come in a lot closer, I guess March 1st, I believe that's 15 days out. Uh, the problem is you're going to be down even more if we decide to be to be fancy tomorrow and run up. And on the downside, you're not quite making as much the trade cost you more. So if I were you, I would want to go at least to the eighth with a balanced fly or unbalanced if that's what you wanted to do. Um, get my chat going here. So if you guys have questions along the way, put them here in the chat feature. Try to hit that to everyone. Uh, the little blue thing right above where you put your messages, uh, a lot of times it'll default to just the host. And I read them back anyway, but that way everybody can see it now in, in case I forget to read it. And then the other trade that I mentioned earlier today was the diagonal. And the diagonal can be played a lot of different ways. But the put diagonal, for one, if you wanted to do something that was bearish, uh, what I normally do with these is I go about, um, oh, 30 points or so above what we're trading. And that's where I will buy along. So I might, let's just go up to 60. Let's just buy the put 
at 50, 60, and then sell a put at 50, 50, 10 points lower. Now, if we do that, even at all time highs, you're going to be in dead center at all time highs. How's that for a trade? Not bad, huh? And by the way, you can do this for two weeks out. You could probably even do it for next week. We'll take a look. Uh, but on the downside, nothing but net for you, right? You're making money. And uh, on the upside, uh, you wouldn't have to do anything till you have to do 50, 60, 50, 70. And then you could add a diagonal or calendar up here. A lot of different things you could do. If you just want to be a little bit bearish, what you could do is only be five points wide right around the money. Now here, you're pretty much protected. If we have a big down move, you know, like we did the other day, you'll be all right. You could take it off in small profit or adjust it down here, but it won't be too nerve wracking. And then on the upside, you really don't need to do anything until 50, 70. So that trade looks great too. Um, and I do like to do these usually three days wide and the calendar is four or five days wide. I've been doing them four, probably what I would do here. Uh, so, and then by the way, you can do these. Sometimes it sounds counterintuitive to do them with calls because you say, hey, Mark, if this is going to go up, why would I want to be in something this long? Vega volatility is going to drop. Well, in general, that is true. Uh, but as we've been seeing even here today, as we go up, volatility has stayed pretty firm. And uh, yeah, D, uh, I'll get I'll go right back to that just a second. And then, but you could make money all the way up, same scenario down here. I normally don't do these. Uh, except as an adjustment, but I don't mind doing them once in a while if you really are bullish and you are you can really watch it. So today, Deke, if I was going to do a calendar uh, at um, next week, I would actually put it on at 50.10 because we're so flat to the upside uh, with these call calendars. Make sure it's a call calendar. Puts don't look so good. And then... Uh, you have a lot more room to the downside. So I'd probably do about 10 points below. Now, if you want to wait a little bit, and let's say an hour from now, we're at 50, 30. Well, I might go up to 50, 20. Or you could just do it here. I don't think you have that much to fear, even if we go to all-time highs, so you're not down that much. So that um, that would be my plan for a calendar today, Deke. Um, all right, so... I, I just, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity one more time to set expectations about uh, the trade uh, texting service, trade signals, uh, Mark's income trades that will be starting on next Tuesday because Monday's a holiday. And if you sign up for that service, you will, um, you will get a text whenever I'm looking at putting on a trade. So you can follow along with whatever I'm doing, paper or what have you, do what's appropriate for you and with your skill level, risk management, all those things. Um, and uh, when I put out that text and then I'll put out what I got filled at, because I'm going to tell you guys I'm doing it before I go out to get filled. And uh, I'll, I'll give you that just a matter of fact, it's right here. I think I have it on here. Let's see. Right there, you can go and fill out, uh, do everything, the bundle and everything there, Luann, at that uh, link. Uh, anyway, so you get one trade a week, once in a while, too. Uh, but uh, let's say I sent out and say, hey, here's a calendar I'm going to do. Uh, and then and I'll go out and do it. And I'll let you know what I got filled at. I'll, I'm going to send out notes that um, I'm going to send out notes about how I'm looking at the trade as far as profit. When would I start looking at an adjustment? Well, Terry, but will we get a trade? A CYA alert of the trades turning it verse. You might. I'm not always going to say necessarily commit. Let's say if we put this on right here and maybe we're down to 49.90 here in 20 minutes. I mean, you could say it's going against you, but you're nowhere near an adjustment point. So I might put out a note and say, hey, just remember, hey, we're going to adjust if we get to 49.70 or something like that. But yes, so you'll get, you'll get noticed when I'm thinking about putting on the trade, when I do put on the trade, when I adjust the trade, even along the way, um, if I say, hey, you know, nothing much happened today, we'll just stay in the course or whatever, just kind of review. And uh, when I close it, of course, I will send you a note. 
Yes, there would be days that you wouldn't hear from me, Luann. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you put on, I put on a calendar next week to let you guys know. Then I put it on. I tell you, I did it on Tuesday. And then uh, what if the market kind of lays there and we get to like Thursday or you might not even hear from me on Wednesday unless something's really going on. Uh, you might hear me on, from me on Thursday if I want to send a note about it. Uh, but it just depends. I would expect to be in probably most calendars, oh, four to seven days, probably sometimes a little more. Just to be clear, I don't ever get out of a trade just because I've been in it a certain number of days. Uh, I might consider it if it's almost expiration in a day or two, but I don't do things like, hey, it's a 30-day trade. I've been in it at 10. I'm still not at my profit point. Get out. I don't do that. I think because what you're going to do many times is start over with a new trade, and now you're back at square one. What will be the risk capital required on the trades average? I just want to sure. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm probably – going to put these trades on. I'm going to get them filled and send it out to you. Probably one, two, maybe four contracts at the most. You don't have to do what I put out. You could do more. You could do less, whatever works for you. I'm probably going, I think I'm just going to do, you know, a couple lots as examples because I don't want to give an inference to people about how big they should be. Right. So that's up to you with your risk tolerance. If you even want to do the trade at all. Remember, this isn't, Advice I'm just giving you, uh, just letting you follow me. Let's see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to probably do most of these two to four contracts, somewhere around there. So the capital, say, in a calendar, I think for this particular service, if you had three to $5,000, as far as the amount of money you might need just to trade the trades I'm going to send out, I think that amount of money would probably be enough to if you wanted to trade the trades that I'm doing, if you had the skill set for it and it was right for you. Well, your trade alerts work for the people who are not always near their PC and cannot get trades right away. Well, they're going to work if you, I'm, they're going to be texted to you. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to talk to Tom if they get emailed too. I know they get texted to you through Slack. So that's the idea is that you could get this text and know that what I'm looking at, what I may have done, uh, and uh, from there. So it's text. I don't know if it's email yet. You can email Tom at aramer.com and see if it is more than just text or you might be able to put it into something else for you. Um, but I mean, I don't think you have to be at your computer all the time. One of the reason that uh, one of the things I would consider is, you know, if you know you're going to be out of pocket but can get a text is, hey, you know, we I will told you hey, we might adjust up around 50, 60 by adding a 50, 90 calendar or down here, same thing. So you get, you just set an alert, maybe 50, 50, and then at 50, 60, you'll probably be hearing from me anyway. And then you could also execute the trade, the adjustment anyway. So this is just to kind of help you along and let you follow me. Uh, but uh, if you want to do things on your end, well, you'll have to do the things on your end, right? Okay. But I wanted to set expectations. So most likely one trade a week. Sometimes there might be two. Might do two different or maybe a fly and a calendar. Maybe two calendars, maybe two flies. We'll see. Um, but you can just follow along, see how it goes. And of course, I'm going to um, be keeping track of all this. There ends up being a record there on the side of how we did in the trade and uh, that you can follow along with. But it's just getting started next week. Uh and uh, on Tuesday, well, on Tuesday is the first day it could be. I may or may not do a trade on Tuesday. Hey, if we open up down 100 or something, I probably wouldn't. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not going to jam on a trade on a bad day. <laughs> but uh, it could be as early as Tuesday. When would I do a calendar versus a diagonal? Well, a calendar is more non-directional, right? If I really didn't have much of an opinion. And then if you have an opinion, say you're, bullish, then you might do the diagonal. If you're not quite as bullish as that, where you're getting a pretty decent amount of trouble down here, you can also be five points wide. Now you're not down as much there. You don't make as much there. But that, it's up to you. If you want to lean one way or another or, or be up here and lean with a put uh, one way or another, that's all fine. However you um, want to do it. But So basically, diagonals are when you want to be more directional and calendars are when you want to be more non-directional. 
And at this point, actually, because of how call calendars are skewed flat to the upside, the demand for calls is so high. You can actually put it on a little below the market, not to say you're not bullish, but this way it will give you more room since we're, you know, up here near all time highs, it's good to protect yourself. You know how fast we ran down the other day, uh, but you can do something like that too. Sorry if it has been on oh, where to go. Okay. Sorry if it's Vanessa, I just jumped in. What do you do when VIX is greater than 20? Butterflies up to 25. Uh, and then I will consider some flies probably going to be a lot wider, maybe 80, 90 points. Also back ratios, that type of thing, if we get above 25 on the VIX. Generally above 25 on the VIX, it's getting highly speculative to do things. But above 20 to 25, you can still, I've even done diagonals, which are long big up there, butterflies. Certainly longer term flies you could do, even with the VIX at under 25, 23, 24, whatever. I would like to see some butterfly trades that consist of two trades with one fly over one that is narrow. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Terry. Butterfly trade with that consists of two trades with one fly wide over. Oh, that kind of, you know, I don't normally do that kind of trade. I mean, um, I don't normally put a fly inside of a fly uh, like that. Yeah, it's not something I normally do, but I could look into that. Hey, why don't you email me? Uh, here, let me get this up here real quick. Boom. Uh, I'm going to put my email address in there. Email me just some strike ideas so I can see exactly what you're talking about because that's not something I do normally. Uh, but... Um, yeah, email me and, and I'll, I will look at something and see what I can come up with maybe for next time. Okay. Also, anyone that is joined up and subscribed to my YouTube channel, there's that. And uh, I guess uh, that's about that. Anyhow, let me get this copied again. I might need it at the end. And we're back. Fly A is the high return on typically on each yeah. Okay, yeah, just send me examples of that to that email address. Uh, with this, show me some real world uh, strikes that you would use today for that kind of thing. I just want to look at it, get a feel for what you're talking about. I, I don't believe I've ever seen it, to be honest with you. That doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, that's just something I haven't done. You know, there's so many things you can do in the option world. So send me that, and I'll take a look at it. Hey, maybe it's maybe it's a good thing. We'll we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. Maybe I could talk about it next week or, or what have you. What is the profit typically on each butterfly? Well, most of the time you should be able to get around 8 to 10% and, and a butterfly that's, well, my all put one especially that's out 35 days or more. In a shorter term fly, I'm still going for that. That is my prop, That is my goal is to try to get 8 or 10%. Uh, but I'll come off it, you know, if we're like, the week Friday, the week before expiration, if I have six or seven, I'd probably take it. Then there may be other circumstances where I'll take an early profit. But eight to 10% is my general goal in calendars, flies, or, or diagonals for that matter. That's what I'm shooting for initially. Uh, once in a while, um, I will, uh, I'll take it a little further, but I think you have to be pretty careful with that myself. Because you, you don't want to be in a trade in a calendar or something. Here, let me show you this. And let and then you you get profitable. And then you go, oh well, I'm, but I'm here. I can make a lot more money. Well, the problem is if we move up a lot, you're like you're standing on a beach ball and you can see your profit evaporate, or at least a lot of it. So I generally recommend that you take eight or ten percent profit when you get it, even if you're dead center and get out. Right now, the put counter is cheaper than your call counter shown. Should you do puts? Well, as I was saying, Dave, the reason that I like the call calendar is that look at the skew up here. It's so flat. At our upper break even, we're down about $44, $43. And if I do it with, and it's $595. Now, if you do it with puts, you're down more money at the upper break even. I, mean, I think it contracted a little too. I know it's cheaper, uh, but... Nowhere that I'm aware of that I can think of in option trading, uh, a spread trade. I can't think of one where I consider 
you know, one being cheaper than the other as something, you know, uh, paramount to the trade. You can do it. Uh, I don't care. I mean, you could do put counts and have them work here. I just like the looks of how this graph lines up with the call counter better. Martin, I don't know that there'll be, uh, I don't plan at this point, any spec trades with my trade alert service. However, I'll certainly look at, at spec trades at traders lounges and, and even opening bells there starting next week. We can look at some. If you had something in mind today, we could look at it. But I'm mainly an income trader, not, not a spec trader. I don't do dailies. Uh, I don't do a lot. Very, very rarely ever buy a, a put or a call vertical. Um, I spend 99.9% .9 of all my time and capital and trading doing flies, counters, diagonals, not all at once, you know, depending on what the VIX is, in the SPX. It's what I do. After doing this non-directional style now for 19 years, uh, I just really like it better than picking direction. So I might lean, like I said, you could do something like this. And, and I certainly lean things like, hey, I'm a little bullish, I'll do this. But you see, I have room to be wrong, right? If I'm right, I've run up here, it's not over. I can be all right. If it goes down, great. But even if it runs up, it can still work. That's the kind of trades I like. I don't like a trade that I can't do anything about if it doesn't go my way. I like a trade that can go either way and I'm all right. And sometimes I'll lean one direction might be better for me. Uh, but that's how I approach things. Ratio backspreads. Yes. Now, ratio backspreads, I do use those in real high vol. Uh, somebody brought like if you're over 25, but uh, I do ratio backspreads whenever I anticipate that uh, we're going to have an 80 or 100 point move in the SPX one way or another over the next couple of days. Uh, now, as far as the trade alert service, I might throw one of those in once in a while uh, because they are, they are non-directional, quite honestly. <laughs> they are a little different, but that'll be a different animal. I wouldn't look for those very much because... I, may, I mainly do ratio backspreads in extremely high volatility, like Rover 25 on the VIX, or and usually a news event driven where I think we're really going to move, move. Then I look at ratio backspreads, and I've done a lot of them. Actually, they just absolutely saved my bacon back in during um, you know, the COVID in 2020. Uh, March 24th, we had that big down move. I started doing ratio backspreads. And uh, by the end of March, I, I had just, I had the best one month period I ever had in my life. And, and because ratio backspreads work so well, but you really got to have that market move a lot. Uh, so many times people will come into my opening bell in the past. Um, and uh, they'll say, hey, Mark, we're, you know, we're really down at 60, 80 today. Should we put on a back ratio? Well, that's a little late now. You want to put those on before. Now, if you anticipate, hey, we're down 60 or 80, we're going to go down 60 or 80 more or up, then you could. Lord says the toss of Vega calculations may not be accurate for counters. Do you adjust that in your setups? I do not. Uh, and I realize that the um, Vega, that the, the toss analyze page is theoretical, but it's very close, very close. And I only, I know from experience the last three months now, that this is solid, that it doesn't go against you very fast at all on the upside, just like it's portraying. I'm not saying that it's Nats behind NASA accurate, right? Because I don't think this is. For another thing, I don't think the theta number is actually accurate right off. For one, it seems like, you know, it takes a while for it all to come in. But that may just be your volatility, your short going up more than your long, too. Okay. Um, what else we got? Any other questions today once again if you're interested in joining opening bell traders lounge next week or whatever trade alerts or everything boom there it is go to that link and uh starting tuesday morning uh we'll go with all those things opening bell we'll have a traders lounge that day and maybe a trade we'll see on the alerts uh, you know it's hard to say we'll see what we get we got a three-day weekend coming up we'll see how the market comes in and then make a determination. All right. All right, guys. I will be back here tomorrow 
at 8 o'clock Central Time with the opening bell. We'll see what the futures have done to us. Thank you all for your attention and your interest. And will you send out alerts in toss language? Oh, yeah. What I plan on doing, uh, Jim, is I'm going to tell you I'm looking at something. I may put that in toss language. Definitely the fills will be in toss language. I'm going to copy and paste the trade from toss, Jim. But even if you didn't have toss, it's, you can read it and understand it. Yes, it is, Tony. That's the idea. Is this a trade for? Yes. This is not speculation like, you know, the current craze, the single day options. If you like doing that, I think it's okay. I wouldn't go hog wild with my money, uh, but uh, it's fun. Just like, you know, go to a casino once in a while. You can have a good time. That's what I see zero day options being. It doesn't mean it's wrong or it's not a good time. You just have to have good money management. And I don't care to use my brain power with what I have left uh, on that. So I just do income style trading or trading for a living type trading, non-directional spreads. If the market kicks up a lot, then we'll do something like back ratios or something. We're not dead in the water. We may take a pause. You know, like I said, if we come in Tuesday and say the market was down 80 or 100, I'm probably not doing any new trades that day. I might, but we're, it'll be kind of a more leaning spec thing if I do. You know, you don't, want to wade in there um it's like you used to tell people they go oh, mark what if i put this on every monday would you say put a calendar on every monday you know i couldn't really say that you can't always do it the same day of the week because you could be in south florida and say you know i go golf on monday but oh the hurricane's landing today it's a cat four well i golf on monday you know <laughs> of course you wouldn't do that right uh so some days if the market's really haywire uh, i might not do anything new might just if i'm in something do what i can do with that you know whatever needs to be done okay all right folks well i'll talk to you tomorrow morning then at eight central at my opening bell have a good one. Oh, and by the way if you go on this site the Aramer site you can go to library you can watch these recorded what i did do already um you can also find recordings if you follow that sales link it actually has it in the on the sales link page the recordings of the ones i've done this week kind of give you a taste okay bye-bye folks bye-bye